So what happens when you're an adult? When you're watching television, you're essentially staring at a blinking light, much like the mice in Christakis' experiment. If you've ever experienced a mind fog after watching television, you're not alone. The brain has four modes that it operates in, four brainwave patterns. Delta is when you're deep asleep, theta is when you're in light sleep, alpha is awake but relaxed, uh, it's the mode of uh, thinking that you are in when you're in the most heightened state of suggestibility. And then there's beta, the highest functioning mode, like when you're reading a book or you're having a very stimulating conversation. In 1969, Herbert Krugman did a study where he found that in less than 60 seconds, the human brain switched from beta brainwave patterns, those exhibited during logical thought, to alpha brainwave patterns. Alpha is not a bad brainwave pattern to be in, but when you're in that brainwave pattern a lot of the time, and if you look at the averages of how much people are watching television, this just leaves the mind unfocused and unable to concentrate. Researchers have said that watching television is similar to staring at a blank wall for several hours. Robert Kuby did a study which appeared in Scientific America in 2002. Looking at how people experienced uh, television in the uh, uh, flow of their everyday life. And we used a, a, a beeper technology where we would beep people uh, at intervals and uh, they, would, they would write down what they were doing, how they were feeling and so on. And um, I was able to look at this stuff and, and I was able to show and demonstrate like what kinds of days people experienced when they would watch more at night. And the answer to that was they felt not very good at work. They, they had a really bad day at work. I found that uh, people who didn't have a good tolerance for what I called unstructured time watched more TV. And I would say this is probably true for use of the internet too. If, if you don't feel comfortable with yourself and you need to fill up that time when you're by yourself and you, and you don't have anything else to do, then what are you gonna do? You're, well, you're gonna gravitate to the easiest, most inexpensive, medium that was ever invented, which is virtually free, television, and, and fill up your, your mind with something else. So it's a kind of form of escapism. The effects of television on the mind are probably one of the most studied aspects of our society. And one of the things that takes place in the mind is that the frontal lobe is being bypassed. Within minutes of sitting down and watching television, the frontal lobe activity simply goes almost to nothing. The frontal lobe of the brain is the seat of spirituality, morality, and the will. It's actually the analytical portion of our brain, and it's actually the decision maker. And so uh, it's a crucial aspect in regards to our future success and happiness is how well our frontal lobe is functioning. And uh, unfortunately, entertainment television suppresses the frontal lobe of the brain. Uh, actually, in about 90 seconds of uh, viewing it, uh, the frontal lobe uh, circulation uh, begins to go down and uh, it um, actually has an adverse effect. And you know, the interesting thing is people watch entertainment television often due to the fact that they feel a little depressed or anxious and it kind of calms them. But in reality, it's a very short-term fix and it's going to complicate things in the long run. Of course, I'm most known for the one who treats depression uh, and anxiety. In fact, we treat the most severe forms of depression and anxiety. And uh, what we have found is virtually every depressed patient will have about a 40% decrease in circulation and activity of the frontal lobe of the brain. And so we're trying to enhance the frontal lobe. And so, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, a lot of these gadgets that produce this overstimulation, uh, they can be fun for the short term. But, you know, there's more fun things to do than ever before in human history, but yet we have more depression than ever before in human history, more anxiety. Mental health problems are skyrocketing throughout the world. And the entertainment medium is one of the primary reasons why this is occurring. Uh, studies will clearly demonstrate that when you go to entertainment as a way to either um, get fun uh, and, and, and it becomes a habitual process, the risk of depression and anxiety will more than double. So we decided to drive down to LA and to talk to a top neurologist and find out really what's happening with the frontal lobe when we watch television. 
Well, each hemisphere has a prefrontal cortex, and it is, uh, depending on how you measure it, 30 to 33 percent of uh, the human neocortex. Uh, it has uh, many uh, functions which uh, are often uh, discussed in terms of cognition as executive abilities. I like to uh, summarize it by uh, having a role that you'd expect from a chief executive officer of a corporation, making strategic decisions, monitoring those, the performance uh, of those uh, activities, uh, making corrections en route, and so on. It's also the source of uh, social behavior. It turns out that uh, human, uh, humans are particularly visual animals. Um, a lot of the information uh, that uh, is required uh, uh, for relating to the environment uh, is uh, visual. And uh, so a lot of the posterior part of the neocortex is devoted to complex visual processing beyond the primary visual cortex. So that uh, uh, I think of it as a, um, uh, a gradual reconstruction. Well, what you see is not necessarily uh, a carbon copy of reality. What you see is a gradual uh, coding and reconstruction of the signal in neurologic terms. And in that process, a lot of interpretation goes on. So Dr. Mendez says that the frontal lobe is like our command center. It's like where we make all these executed decision-making processes. That our perception of reality is based upon what we basically take in through our visual cortex. Now, question, could you change someone's reality based on what you give them visually to watch? Dr. Michael Rich, a media expert from Boston's Children's Hospital, wrote an article about what happens in your brain when you sit down and you watch a 3D movie, and here's what he says. So what does your brain do when it's sitting in a theater looking at a giant screen wearing 3D glasses and swimming in surround sound, processing 24 images that flip by per second? Your brain dutifully processes those stimuli and does little else. In fact, your prefrontal cortex, which is involved in impulse control, future thinking, and moral choices, is basically inactivated during this process. That is why you get lost in a movie. Also, researcher Jacob Jacoby found after testing 5,400 viewings that 83% of those viewers misunderstood or miscomprehended that which they watched only moments before. That's what happens when the prefrontal cortex or the frontal lobe is shut off. You know, one of the interesting things about um, educational TV, uh, you know, for instance, um, C-SPAN is educational TV. It may not be the greatest education, but it's one camera view and there's a senator up there giving a talk and giving a lecture. And you'll see something happen when you're in a room. You know, I, 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 being a doctor, there's a doctor's lounge at the hospital I'm at. And often doctors look for educational TV when they're there together. And uh, you will see them stand up and begin to vehemently argue against the television set because they'll say, you know what, he, didn't, he left this out, he left that out, he's not mentioning this. This is a very biased presentation. You will never see anyone argue with their television set when entertainment television is going on. You will see them actually just sitting there accepting all this, maybe laughing or crying, but they're not going to argue with the set because they don't have the ability. They may, may vehemently disagree with what's going on, on that program, but they have no ability to actually bring forward that disagreement and start to lo logically go through the arguments in their mind because of the suppression of the frontal lobe of their brain. Furthermore, research has shown that the limbic system cannot tell the difference between something that is real and not real. That's a job for the frontal lobes or the prefrontal cortex, which is virtually shut off, remember? So what happens is your limbic system then reacts to television or a movie as if it's real. It releases the appropriate hormones of the fight or flight system in conjunction with the stresses that it places upon the body.
everybody. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys liked that clip. It came from a documentary called Pseudology. If you want to purchase this documentary, you can get it from littlelightstudios.tv. We've got some more clips from this documentary. You guys can check them out over here. You can also rent it on Vimeo. If you want to subscribe to our channel, hit that little subscription button and you'll be notified when new videos come out. And also, if you want to help support our work, Patreon's a great way to do that. You can help us continue to put videos like this out. We hope to see you guys soon. See ya.